Welcome to the Showtime Report. This is Devon Johnson, and this is your weekly report for all things Lakers. Guys, six and one. The streak continues. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, we're pretty darn good. We witnessed an all-time great duel between LeBron James and Luka. LeBron dropping 39, 12, and 16, and of course, the young man Luka dropping 31, 13, and 15 in the Lakers 119, 110 win over the Dallas Mavericks. This was the king against the prince. It even gave me vibes of 19-year-old Kobe and Jordan's duel back in 97, and in more ways than you think. Young superstar versus current GOAT. Young superstar admired GOAT growing up. Young superstar emulated GOAT's playing style. Young superstar still has a full head of hair. Just, just shave it, LeBron. Please. LeBron, god damn it. Just tap out, man. Tap out on this hair life. The Lakers then beat the San Antonio Spurs 103 to 96, completing their Texas two-step on the road trip. And they did it with collaborative team effort, with performances from Avery Bradley with 16 points, and of course, Superman Dwight Howard with a great 14, 13, and two stat line. Listen, man, any win against the Spurs is a quality win. I just love watching them cave in. Hey, Pop! You like that? You like that? Lakers then traveled on to Chicago where they overcame a 19-point deficit against the Chicago Bulls. And of course, they started slow for the 50 billionth trillionth time. Come on, guys. Let's get it together, man. Form fan, listen, a lot of Laker fans are attributing the Lakers' consistent slow starts in games to JaVale McGee, him being in the starting lineup. However, I really do think it's just a matter of two things, guys. Effort and time. The Lakers as a whole tend to come out flat-footed, and it's not just JaVale McGee. You really can say that about anybody other than LeBron. If everyone but JaVale was showing effort, then I would have no qualms about benching it. But since that is not the case, JaVale should be given the benefit of the doubt. Additionally, guys, JaVale is a player who takes a lot of pride in starting. The man literally responded to one of the posts about benching him in our replies with FOH. Google it if you don't know what that is. Moving him to the bench would be a huge blow to his ego and would do much more harm than good. Which brings us to tonight's game against the Miami Heat. Of course, they have been a team that has surprised a lot of people early out of the gates with a 5-2 record. They even have some roster issues that are going down with injuries with Deion Waiters and Justice Winslow, who are day-to-day. -day. Listen, in the season, they're averaging more assists. They're averaging more points. They have a slightly higher field goal percentage than us. But they don't have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Expect a huge game from the dynamic duo. The only question is going to be which person is going to step up in that starting lineup. We already know that Kuzma is going to come in and provide a spark off the bench alongside Dwight Howard, who will probably put up another double-double tonight. But the key to success in this game is going to be making sure that somebody in that starting lineup provides some scoring and some defense. And of course, that's not the only game happening for the Lakers this weekend. They also are hosting the Raptors on Sunday, the defending champs, Eastern Conference champs. And they've lost some people. Kawhi, but they still have a tremendous score, and we're looking for our defense to stifle that man's offense. Of course, Siakam has been averaging about 25 points, but he hasn't seen the likes of a Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, and of course, Anthony Davis, who is leading the NBA in blocks. And of course, if you haven't noticed, the Lakers are the number one defensive team in the league, and this weekend should make quick work of both the Miami Heat and the Toronto Raptors. Listen, and then we're getting on the road. We're going to Phoenix. We're going to see Devin Booker and his boys, who have been a surprise so far in the league. Many people expected them in a loaded Western Conference to be at the bottom of the pile, but they have been amazing and surprising. But you can count on one thing to happen. You can count on the Lakers' suffocating defense to trouble and frustrate Devin Booker and his boys. And then we come back home, where we're going to see the Warriors at home. We'll be at home in the Staples Center, we're going to see the 2-6 and six Warriors who will probably lose a few more games between now and then. And they have a young roster depleted of almost all their stars. Steph and Clay. Durant is gone. Green is hurt. And of course their bench has been decimated. So, if the Lakers are smart, they can really do the next four games and go 4-0. and oh, We could be looking at this, guys. Think about this. We could be walking into the end of next week 10-1. and one. But of course it all starts tonight. 
But we have to win this game and we gotta take it seriously with Jimmy Butler and his boys coming into town. So make sure that you tune in tonight and every game over the next week. After each game, we'll have our post-game report with Greg Bergman and myself. We'll make sure to go over and hear all of your commentary and your questions. This is the only post-game review that will give you the voice to speak and we'll address as many questions as we can. We want to hear from you. So make sure tonight, as soon as the game is over, head over to any of the social media platforms, Twitter with Periscope, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, you name it. We got you. Lakers about to go 10 and 1, baby. And we might as well go ahead and plan our parade down Figueroa, guys, because I'm feeling it. I smell it. There's a championship coming our way. I'll see y'all later. Ah.